everyone. Hey. So I am assuming you're all here for a fan celebration of Batman and Animation. Yeah? You're in a good place? Awesome. So thank you guys so much for coming. I'm London Jackson, and I run History of the Batman on Instagram and YouTube and all of that stuff. And we have some very special panelists with us today. We have Kevin Altieri, who is a storyboard artist and director on shows such as Batman the Animated Series and films such as Mask of Phantasm. We have Dan Reba, who is a storyboard artist and director on Batman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Justice League, just to name a few. And we have Mike Gogan, who is a character design artist on Batman the Animated Series and also a supervisor, producer, and director on shows like The Batman and films like Justice League The New Frontier. So first off, thank you guys so much for being on this panel. It's as a Batman fanatic, I'm so excited to be able to speak with you guys about your work. And I thought this panel would be a special one to do, especially since this year is the 80th anniversary of Batman's debut. And part of the fandom and how many people were introduced to the character isn't just the live action films, but it's animation. For many people, the first time they ever saw Batman was the animated series or the new Batman adventures and a lot of the shows and film from the 90s and 2000s. So I thought it would be fitting to ask each of our panelists what was their first introduction to Batman. And Kevin, you can start. <laughs> it was probably the same as Dan's. Um, there was like, when I was like six years old, I got this little paperback book that was uh, Batman. And it just had the picture of, you know, Batman and Robin on the cover with like that famous pose with the cape behind him. And it was like the origin story all the way through, all black and white with, uh, what was it? Dick Sprang and... Yeah, Dick Sprang, yes. Bob Kane, Dick Sprang, you know, Bill Finger. Yep. It was just, uh, yes. that was my introduction. Yeah. And then, in 1966, Adam West showed up, and I was, like, hooked. Yes. <laughs> Very similar. Thanks. But, but, but I'm, I'm a little bit younger, so I couldn't read that book. <laughs> and... That's and, subtle drag. And, and, and the other it. thing okay. is that my, my, my brother had collected Batman when I was really little, so he would let me see his comics. There he is right there. He would let me see his <laughs> comics, and then I would go through, and I, I would just obsess over the character. I really, like, I love the Joker and all this stuff. So that, when the Adam West show came on, I was primed because I had, couldn't read yet, so I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, this is, that was my Batman. So that was, that was my introduction. The, the, but the comics came first, so... Uh, pretty much very similar. Also, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had two older brothers that had a little stack, a little small collection of, and there was all kind of Silver Age DC comics, more Justice League, but a lot of World's Finest, some Brave and the Bold, those kind of things. Um, uh, definitely a lot of Batman. And then uh, Batman, the series came on in 66, so I was completely uh, hooked on that, a huge fan, so... <laughs> Oh, and the it. Batman cards. The Batman cards. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was primed cards. with the Batman cards. Yeah. Right. And, and I have to say that that book that you're talking about, yeah. that origin story, is has actually pulled me out of the TV show. Because when I saw how cool that, that, <laughs> that image was of, of that origin story, and I thought, oh, my gosh, that, that is a really cool, scary Batman. And, <laughs> and, and then I noticed people were laughing at Batman, and I didn't understand that when I was little because it was real to me. Um, right. But when I saw that shark on his leg, you know, and then, uh, <laughs> so I wanted to do a serious Batman, and all my life I was like, yeah, Neil Adams, do a real serious Batman, and right. finally we got to we got to do it. Yeah, and, I, and that was uh, yeah, because I remember when remember the Riddler, the pilot. Yes. Because I remember the pilot. Yes. And at the end, like the Riddler goes falls down this hole in like this stamp factory, and just all of a sudden there's this big explosion, and it's like Batman and Robin. Do you think he could have survived that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we'll never know. We'll see, Robin. We'll see. You know, and it's like, so it's like kind of serious. And then from then on, yeah. it just got goofy. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. well, it was goofy. But, uh, but yeah, we fixed but, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a very good segue into <laughs> asking how did those or projects and We'll get into the, the theme and kind of the tone, different from the 66 series, of course, but how did you jump into this industry and working on the shows? Well, 
the Batman show, Dan, all of us worked together over at Deke in right. the 80s. Like, uh, Dan and I, well, from Kid yeah. Video. Yep. I don't know if we should admit this, but yeah. Kid Video, Dan and I worked together with uh, Brad Raider, too, um, and other people that ended up on the show. Yeah. And Mike came on board on ALF. Alf. We hired right. him as a character designer on ALF. Nice. And okay. so we all knew each other. But when I, when I went over to work on, um, I've said this before, I'll, I'll reiterate it. I was the first director hired on Batman the Animated Series, and Bruce Timm also worked over at Deke um, on Beanie and Cecil and shows like that, and he worked on Cops a little bit mm -hmm. that both Dan and I worked on. And so I was the first director that he hired, and I immediately, as soon as I saw that, like, I thought, okay, is this gonna be Tiny Toons on crack or what? <laughs> <laughs> And I saw like how serious and how really cool the show was. And I like immediately, Dan was working at TMS at the time. And I got on the phone. He was like one of the first people I called. Like, we're doing a cool Batman. It's true, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, yes. the, the bootleg of that, of that pilot film had yes. circulated. I, think, yeah. I don't know who I got it through. I, I shouldn't say because they might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I, got it, I got it, so I kind of knew about it, but I didn't know that it was Bruce. I didn't know who was connected. So when I got the call, I was like, yes, <laughs> that one, yes. <laughs> so yeah, so the first crew, yeah. Hmm? And then go ahead and tell them. No, I was just gonna say it was a little, whoa. <laughs> it was a little different. Uh, uh, I had heard about it through a friend of mine who was already working on the show, if you remember Mark yeah. Wallace. Yeah. Uh, and he said, oh, you'd love this thing. You should come in, you should come in. And uh, I went in, you know, for an, I just I'd been working at another studio, and I was looking for a new job. And and uh, I, you know, it, at that those years, if you remember, the action cartoons were, uh, you know, it was the uh, GI Joe that kind of thing. It, it, you know, yeah. there, we, generally you were you were conditioned not to expect a whole lot of what an action show might be. And I hadn't seen this video, this uh, uh, test footage that was floating around. So I went in, and and uh, you know, I met with uh, Bruce wasn't there that day, and I met with uh, Eric. Mm -hmm. Radomski, and um, he says, oh, would you like to see our, our, uh, some test footage that we did? And he already had some t character designs on the wall, and I'm, this is looking, this looks different. You know, I'm looking, this is different. And then he plays this thing, and I was blown away. Of course, I didn't let that out, let it out that I was blown away, but <laughs> too much, but I was blown away. And, um, and it was just so exciting to, to get involved at that, at that point. Yeah, I just want to say that um, I have to apologize to Mike, because... <laughs> You know, I get, Eric comes over, was either Eric or Bruce, comes over to me and goes and says, hey, do you know Mike Gogan? It's like, yeah, hell yeah, I know Mike Gogan. It's like, he's one of the best character designers in the business, man. Present company accepted, Bruce. You know, but no, but Mike is a great character designer. And he says, well, he wants to be a board artist. And I go like, board artist? I don't know if he's ever done boards. But yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to work with Mike. And Mike, first thing he says to me, is like, I'm gonna do boards on this show. I don't, please don't ever ask me to do character design. Please don't. And I go, Mike, never. I won't. Yeah, of course. Yeah, two <laughs> like, episodes in, I'm yeah. like, I'm doing character design. Oh, it's oh like, it's, it's character designs like Randa the Robot. Yeah, Randa the Robot, oh my gosh, he was awesome. Brilliant. That was amazing. The Marilyn Monroe Robot, designs. he designed that. Uh, he, uh, Bruce designed Clayface, but he did all the attitudes and the turns, yeah. and you did all that wonderful stuff. You did so many cool yeah. designs. Yeah, you're going to want to applaud this, but <laughs> the whole third act of Feet of Clay Part 2, I didn't touch it. It's all Mike. Nice. It's like, <laughs> it's like you, you, the script, you wouldn't, the script that we read, it's like I go, I don't even know what to do with this. Like I had already changed stuff that I boarded and Brad worked on and we, we, we changed stuff in the script. And then when I got to the third act, I just looked at it and went like, we can't ask an animation studio. Oh, Mike, just do what you do. And Mike, and I, I looked at the boards and I was like, my God, this is fantastic. And I just closed my eyes and sent it. And TMS did such oh, a spectacular was, job. Gosh, that was so gratifying, can't tell you. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't always happen, but no. it was TMS. So. Yeah. Yeah. And another well, thing. But I also didn't know any better, and I just did, yeah. did it. it yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Feet of Clay, which is a 
fantastic episode and, and very dark if you mm. think about it. And I guess the whole show, especially the aesthetic that people dub dark deco, and it's very much a more uh, noir take than the 66 series that you all were introduced to. And I know certain films like Tim Burton's Batman in 89 had a, an effect on how the 92 Batman anime series was done. So in character design or storyboard artists, when you were working on the episodes, how, what were inspirations that you used to kind of bring out this darker Batman in animation that really hadn't been seen before? And what were your, yeah, just visual inspirations for your craft? <laughs> it's like we, we'd Again. have like discussions all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. Alfred Hitchcock. We, yeah. Oh, for sure. Alfred yeah. Hitchcock. Yeah, that would probably be, yeah, Fritz Lang. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know. Orson Welles. Yeah, Orson yep. Welles. I know we were course, all talking Orson about. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, th- mm-hmm. the Third Man. Yeah. Um, Touch of Evil, we were yeah, talking about yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, we that, that was God. It's like, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like, you know. Actually, now I'm thinking about it. I'm kind of. I mean, we still do it, but there was something really great about the crew that we had. That like when we would do a show. Of course, Dan became a director in his own right, so he was off of my crew. Yeah, yeah but, but thanks to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I recommended him, but. but <laughs> But he had already been directing over at Deke and at different places, so Dan was already a seasoned director. But he gladly came on, and I'm yeah. grateful. It's like for all the, all the yeah. God, the layouts that we did. Oh, my gosh. It's like the, one of the reasons why the first season came out as well as it did, because if anyone noticed, some of the animation was crap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some, you know, but we did the layouts because we couldn't get a layout crew at first people who could draw superhero style or draw like human figures. Um, yeah. So we ended up taking these terrible, quite frankly, terrible mm. layouts mm. and Dan, me, Brad Rader, Mike, we uh, did, redid the layouts ourselves. So they, that's why they come out looking as close to the storyboards as they did. Yeah. So we'd, we'd pull in all-nighters late, late nights working on the layouts and yeah. fixing all of our shows and stuff. And Bruce didn't know that until no. he got to direct a show. Yes. And then he had to redo <laughs> all of his layouts. It was like, yeah, the man who killed Batman, all the acting and all that stuff, he, he did. So then you realized, oh, yeah, this is a, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, we'd stand outside of Bruce's office with the door closed, listening to him swearing at the <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, just like cursing. You could hear stuff, you know, boom, boom, God damn wrong. <laughs> Because he'd come across like a really bad drawing, <laughs> real bad layout from well, someone. On my first day, I was doing character designs, and the guy who ended up, who they hired for layouts, had been an old filmation guy, and he was hired to help with the turns, and, and he was adding all these extra muscles and making it look like a He-Man drawing, and, and I, I said, no, 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 it's simple. We're trying to do a simple show. It's graphic. It's, it's simple. And he, he's like, I thought you guys wanted to make it good. And he didn't understand. <laughs> Out the door, <laughs> yeah. tumbling down Ventura Boulevard. But but he knew technical camera stuff, yeah. so he was very useful because his yeah. drawings, the base of his drawings, is like okay, but the compositions were okay, and then you could actually just redraw the figures, and you know, so it was actually we'd learn from these guys that didn't know the show, but they knew animation. Yeah, and they so. knew they knew the solid techniques too. Right. Yeah. And that, that kind of rambled away from the your question. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you got there. You answered it right there. But okay. I, I love hearing about the creative process and it seemed like there were challenges and things like that. But while you guys were doing the show, did you think that it would have the impact that it does even almost thirty years now? Yeah. I, why do why, why, no, <laughs> Well why do you I, think that? You did. No, I always did. You didn't know? I, I was didn't you know <laughs> I, I got I there's something that Bruce used to say to me like I can't say it here yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't say it here but it's really funny no but he's oh, like man, you you're gonna be hip deep and geek <laughs> yeah. before you know it <laughs> and I'm no, like honest. Bruce what are you talking about it's like don't oh forget it right. <laughs> you, know, you don't know what you're talking about uh, can I just say from my perspective because I'm coming in as you know I was a board artist designer whatever I wasn't a director so I wasn't involved on the level these guys were, and uh, hadn't seen animation, you know, most no, on the crew, you don't tend to see the animation until they decide to share it with you. And none of us had seen any animation on the, te- on the crew, as far as I know. And uh, at least I started a little bit later. I was started on uh, uh, Two-Face Part 2. Yeah, well, actually, you were on uh, Catwoman. That was Catwoman, well, I was doing cleanup. Yeah, you did. But, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's Two-Face right, Part right. 2. Two-Face right. Part 2 is the yeah. first one I've recorded oh. on. Um, um, but 
Anyway, so they, one day they said, oh, we're having a screening at lunch. Like, oh, we're going to get to see one of these. That's great, you know. So we all filed into the room. It's like kind of a routine kind of thing. We all filed into this conference room, and they start to, they put on, uh, uh, remind me of the title. On Leather Wings. Uh, on Leather Wings. Thank yeah. you. On Leather Wings. And you were just like, uh, you know, I mean, you don't do that. When you're, you know, most of these animated TV series that you work on, you know, it's, oh, that was great. That looked good. We were, our mouths were hanging, you know. Uh, and I remember filing out of that, you know, you go in with one sort of attitude and we walked out knowing, oh my God, I'm working on a classic. <laughs> this show is amazing. This is going to be big. I mean, we did know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we knew it at that point. I, yeah. I'm oblivious. I just, I just saw all the flaws. <laughs> it was Kevin's episode. I met Kevin <laughs> uh, uh, at, a, at a signing for, for, for Doug Wildey yeah. at American Comic Book Company before I was hired at Deke. Yeah. And, and, and we became friends then, but we didn't really like hook up or anything. I didn't get your number. We just were like, oh, well, we hit it off really well. Doug Wildey, creator of Johnny Quest, yeah. our favorite show as a kid. <laughs> and that stayed in my mind that like, you know, I still remember and love Johnny Quest. Stuff that people grew up with, it's going to stay with them the same way. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I knew it would be a classic. <laughs> and not just the, the series, but the film Mask of the Phantasm. That now is a classic as well. And in my opinion, one of the best Batman films in animation and live action. I think it is like yay, one yay. of the perfect <laughs> bat films. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> but I There's know a lot I'd fix, but... Well. <laughs> <laughs> what, would you, what would you fix? What did you not like about it? Because I know you worked on... You were a sequence director, and um, so... What were your concerns? Did the giant Batman and Joker fight? Yeah, he did, he did the, the classic fight at the end. It was awesome. It was really <laughs> dramatic. And cool. Yeah, and Mike, let me see. Mike did the the yes. uh, hospital scene. The hospital scene that's actually featured on the DVD was the oh. AB with the storyboard. He drew that. It's yeah. like, he, this guy here. I had to recover scene, from that. Which one. is an amazing. <laughs> it's it was like amazing. The, the best piece of animation is like. What a photo op that would be. The, the, the counselor and his wacky pal. Yeah. <laughs> and his eyes go like, and that was all on the board. And, and oh, but the, Anyhow, the but, screaming but, hospital sequence. Oh my gosh, that was brilliant. Well, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, laughing. And Hart Bachner. I specialize Hart, in insane scenes. I know. Oh, awesome. That's so good. Anyway, well, I, I just felt that um, it spent too much time in flashback. Mm -hmm. That's all. That, that's just my opinion, because yeah. other people don't think so at all. You know, everyone's just like along with the story, and it's like in the back love story. But I would have just, because it's only 70, you're locked to 70 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, just establish they're in love, and let's just do more <laughs> fight scenes. Because they edited out, like I had when Batman, there's like about four finished animation bits of those Auto gyro slicing yeah. the crap out of Batman. <laughs> so when he when he goes after the Joker, and you, he steps outside, and it was like the worst cut I've ever seen. Now everyone's gonna watch it and just <laughs> <laughs> look for this. But when he steps out the door, and you hear the Joker laughing, and the Joker's strapping on the backpack, mm -hmm. the rocket pack, the jet pack. Cool there's a shot where you're panning up from basically Batman's belt up to Batman. And he's looking around, you see these cut up. What was cut out was drip, 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 pool of blood from underneath the cape. He's bleeding out. And then you pan up from the pool of blood to Batman. So he's only got so much time. Yeah. He's gonna pass out from just loss of blood, if anything, it's really clear. So yeah, they, they cut out a lot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, just one, just if you could just cut down one flashback, please, and just give me that pool of blood back. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to briefly touch upon the new Batman adventures because while it's still within the same continuity, the art style is a little different than the Batman animated series. And when um, you were working on it, did, was that like a concern? Did you feel like it wasn't too big of a difference? Because I know many people say, oh, it's a big difference in the art style and maybe some prefer the other, but it's all the same. But how was that transition when? It, it was an interesting transition because we had kind of learned from Superman, the, the studio that we were working with TMS, we did more episodes of Superman and they were using a slightly more angular style. 
And Glenn Murakami was doing more designs at that point, too, so his style was a little more angular. And that story that he did in the Batman annual, that, that, that uh, holiday yep. special, uh, was so graphic and interesting that Bruce fell in love with it and kind of went, oh, let's try to do something more like that. Okay. And so uh, we felt like it was easier for animation. We'd get less, and it, and it actually worked out, because we found better animation with the simpler stream, streamlined style. Um, and, and that way, and there was a thing where uh, the, the, the red skies would kind of fluctuate to blue skies at times, and, mm -hmm. and the old show, we didn't, they didn't quite stick to that. And on the, the second incarnation, it was like, no, nah, hard, fast rule, only red skies, red skies <laughs> at night, red skies, red skies, only red skies. So that we were you know, really making it more graphic. Um, I think maybe the Joker was too graphic. It was an interesting style, but when yeah. we lost his eyes, it was kind of like... Nah. Harley would never make out with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too scary. It was too scary and weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we fixed that on Justice League later, so you know, yeah. we found a nice compromise. And, and Dan, you were a director on tons of Batman Beyond mm -hmm. episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course that depicts like a neo-futuristic Gotham and you also have a younger Batman which really hadn't been seen mm -hmm. in any media. How was that transition to going to a future Gotham but still keeping the same foundation that BTAS and New Batman Adventures had but still kind of keeping that same authenticity that everyone has been used to over a decade almost? It was tough. It was tough. It was a challenge to create a new take on it. And also, Kids WB had kind of changed their, their tone, so it was hard to make it too graphic. And, you know, they were, uh, it was a harder show to make. Uh, it was, it was, and, and, and Glenn had to, like, he was art directing it, so he had to come up with a new color that looked like the old show, but future. So purple. The skies are only purple. Only purple. That's and true. That there were that. tons of purple skies. <laughs> so, <laughs> So that was, that was that mark. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's the show with the purple skies. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, and Mike, it's yeah. going on to another continuity almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you were the supervisor, producer, and director on The Batman, which right. came out in 2004, and that is not within the now classic DC animated universe. Right. So approaching that, wanting to do kind of a new Batman, a younger Batman in his right. early years, what was your experience and maybe certain challenges in trying to bring a new animated Batman, a centric Batman show that is separate from what everyone knows from anime series, New Batman Adventures, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, but right. still make it the same right. Batman character? <laughs> make it Batman. You know? yeah. Well, it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it was. Uh, we really had to, I mean, it, it, you just have to try to uh, uh, start from scratch, really. It was, it was, just, it was very, very challenging. But, um, uh, you know, I think the, the idea of making it uh, literally as if it's a reboot and starting from scratch was the only really way we could do it. Uh, yeah, I think what we were thinking was, it's as if Batman has never existed in this world. This is a completely... Uh, new universe and a, and a new Batman, so that's kind of how we approached it. Um, uh, and yeah, it was just, it was just really challenging. And, and uh, but it was, but it was. And, and initially, I would say, you know, it started as kind of a, uh, you know, I would say almost a marketing kind of uh, approach to the, to re renewing the character for a new generation. Um, and uh, but we really, all of us on that team had a lot of passion for the character. You know, same passion that we grew up with, and all of that. Um, uh, we all carried that same passion. So we really w tried to make sure that we were able to develop the character. I think that's my most mm -hmm. satisfied feeling I have from that show is that we were able to take the character from the beginning all the way through his career kind of and, and um, sort of revisit that whole idea, you know, just from a new perspective, you know. When you first were working on the show, were you afraid of the reaction from the audience that they would, they're <laughs> so used to a certain style or did you just... Sure go in and say, this is a new type of Batman, but it's still the Batman that you would enjoy. Right. There. It was kind of a little of both. A little of <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely <laughs> apprehensive. I think we all were a little apprehensive about even touching this, you know, uh, and not following in the style that was established. So, um, but, you know, I, my attitude was, just keep your head down. We're just going to do this. You know, we have, to put, we have to put all of our heart and soul into this or it's not going to be, you know, worth watching at all. So, 
Um, and that's just what we did. We just kept our heads down and, you know, and we braced for it. And, and you know, there was a reaction. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think in the end, it, it, it uh, had its own kind of life and its own following. Yeah, and, you know. it did. It was, it was yeah. really well done, Charles. Oh, thank you, thank you. It was really well done. <laughs> um, you know, the, the Matsuda designs are really cool. It's really right. it's Jeff, neat oh. looking. It's a really neat looking show. Yeah, Jeff Matsuda, I have to say, yeah, he was really, his, his work was really what inspired everyone for that show. It was really the, what the heart of the show, honestly, was yeah. Jeff's sort of new take on everything. And, you know, for what it's worth, I mean, his, his, his uh, Joker, for example, was really different, but, you know, we just went for it, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and, and kind of made it as... Uh, uh, you know, sort of fun as we could, and you know. So, whether on the show or any of the shows, uh, is there a storyline or a character that you hadn't been able to work on or wanted to present that you just didn't get a chance to that you thought that audiences would enjoy? I would just say this: we really wanted to do Two Face on the Batman. We never oh. got to do it, and that had to do with the films. You know, oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But Especially since the films, the Two Face in the film at that time totally ripped off the uh, animated series, <laughs> you know. And I think you know, they they didn't, you know, the higher ups wouldn't really want to uh, admit that, you know. So they think that people wouldn't. They kind of thought, oh, those cartoons are done. So here's an idea, go with it. All right. I know Bruce wanted to do Nocturna, and and it would have been oh. so cool to do a vampire oh, yeah. story. <laughs> But Fox would never let us do it. And even Kids WB at that time wouldn't let us do it. But yeah. you guys got to do a Dracula movie. so you, We that, did, that yeah. Well, that, was, that was pretty cool. That, that was so a, fun. Yeah, that was the Batman scary. versus Batman Dracula? Batman got to be a vampire after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where Always did that, that come yeah. from with doing Dracula and kind of wanting to have that as the focus? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it just was something that came out of uh, our uh, development, you know. Uh, but <laughs> I had always wanted to do a Dracula. I mean, that was kind of before I even got involved with the animated series. I would, I would sit and dream of doing a Batman movie when I was young and, or a, Dra and a Dracula movie. Those yeah. were two things that I yeah. used to always think about. And, you know, it was an opportunity to do both in one, which was great. But, you know, it's just kind of a, a, a no-brainer of a concept yeah. that, you know, it's a little, it seems a little silly yeah. on the surface, but, but there's was, really something there. And it was a property a that level, you know? DC owned, too, because Kelly, uh, Kelly Jones had done it. Uh -huh. So it was right. like, yeah, they right. did, yes. yeah. Red Rain. I mean, it wasn't yeah. based on that. Yeah. But. yeah, no, it wasn't based on it, but right. drag, it was, it was yeah. there. Yeah. Right. But it worked out better than I think any of us expected, actually. Yeah. In the end, but we tried to be as pure as true as possible to the to the character of Dracula in films and in <laughs> in, in literature. Yeah. So. There are a lot of things I always wanted to do. You know, I wanted to do more Mister Freeze. You know, I wanted to do. I didn't get to do the Riddler. I only got to do one Penguin. Yeah. That you know, Mike did the Mike did the part with the duck boat. <laughs> it was hilarious. I mean, it was like, and Paul Williams was like so much fun oh, to work with. So much fun. He was awesome. What a great guy. Oh. And I just want to add that it's like these two guys, it's like one of the frustrating things about me, I think, with co workers is that I'm not jealous of many <laughs> people. Like, I, I kind of like look forward, I just do what I'm doing. And it's like, well, what would you think of this work? No, it's okay. <laughs> You know, it's like, what do you mean it's okay? It's great. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's great. But the only times I'm like really jealous is like I'm like baby doll came out and I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn it, I wanted to do that one. I really wish I did that. And it's like, and I can't complain about it, but because baby doll, I'm sitting there watching the show and I'm blubbing, you know, with everyone else at the end. And Mike did it to me on Spectacular Spider-Man, which we did for uh, Vic Cook, who's down in front yeah. here. <laughs> and I'm, Mike, you know, he gets hired. Um, I was there with Jennifer Coyle, who was two directors. Um, I don't know what happened to the other director, but Mike got hired as the third director. And his first storyboard comes out, and I could see that Mike drew most of it. And, the, and I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn it. I wish I did that episode. I think it was one of the Green Goblin ones. I can't remember. Yeah. But it was, damn it. It was, it was so good. <laughs> Anyhow, wow. these two guys are like just, I'm always like hats off, you know. Well, especially, you know. And if, and if I wanted a character design with like a pretty girl, you know, 
I would like to do the character design myself, but Mike's in the same room with me, so you know, <laughs> it was like, doing he's girls. just gonna do it better than I was me. always drawing the girls. Yeah, yeah. But I just gotta say, since we're talking, uh, Kevin was totally a mentor to myself yeah. and to oh, everyone too. who worked everyone, with him, and yeah. still continues to Absolutely. be a mentor to so many people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I learned it all from. <laughs> 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 no, but it, no, but it, it's like thanks. But um, no, I, I've, there's been a bunch of people that I've hired and trained and who have ended up hiring me. Um, Vic Cook was one of them. I hired him to do storyboards on ALF. And then lo and behold, he's a producer and I don't know how many shows he's gotten me on. Spider-Man, uh, you know, Stretch Armstrong, which I think is still on the air on Netflix. Um, and um, when I was, at, well, I'm working at Crunchyroll at the moment. And the reason why I'm working there as a director is because I trained uh, Sophia Alexander, hired her, was her, um, hired her as a storyboard uh, trainee, you know, a revisionist, and then she became a board artist. And then I get a phone call about a year later. It says, Kevin, I sold my show. You got to help me. You got it. <laughs> so here we go. You know, it's like the circle of life. It's like, good. and um, I won't mention my age, but... <laughs> You know, it's like, I'm, it, it just keeps going, you know? I don't know. Some people are like big executives. <laughs> we draw. <laughs> I know, of course, we're focusing on Batman, but you've all worked on shows that he's been a part of an ensemble cast from Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, or even Justice League The New Frontier. And how is it working with an ensemble kind of wanting to give every character their own equal amount of <laughs> <laughs> of time. I did a freelance storyboard for this guy. He did. And it's like, really, is there a single character in the whole cast of Justice League that isn't going to be in this crowd? <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the trend, right? It's yeah. trend. Oh. Every hero that exists is in this. Yeah. But it had dinosaurs yeah. and tiger tanks and MG42 <laughs> machine guns and things that I could just draw naturally, so <laughs> whatever. So what are the challenges to making everyone kind of stand out, even though there is a large cast? Uh, people? Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing was, when you have Superman as part of the group, then you're like, okay, how do we not have him do everybody's job? Exactly. So, <laughs> um, right. so one of the things I I'd come up with the smear effects for Superman on, on the animated series. I came up with that that timing for that, and I figured out how to do that when it, we were doing an episode of Batman, uh, the the clocking episode. It was a, a wipe that I that I stole from Dover Boys from Chuck Jones, and we figured out the timing <laughs> and how to how to make the DXs and the timing, the, how many frames it would take, and I built and we realized, hey, that would work for Superman. So we can get a really cool blur to make him really faster than a speeding bullet. When he comes into a room, <laughs> it'll be really cool. So we did that on the show, and and then Bruce had to break it to me. Look, you know, we can't do this on Justice League because the Flash is to be the fast guy. So right. they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we can't have the smear anymore. So it was like, no smear on Superman anymore. <laughs> and and, and yeah. let Flash be there first because he's the fast guy. But the thing is, you know, when when you're doing Justice League. You know, many of the characters, like Flash was a good example. Flash that basically runs fast. That's what he does. Yeah. He goes fast. So it's not, you know, you, you can come up with a great feature moment for the Flash, right? <laughs> Much more easily than you can come up with a whole story for the Flash. And that goes for most of these characters. They have that very specialized talent, and you can sort of feature that, their, you can feature their moment. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with Batman and Superman, they're, you, you know, in just, for example, in New Frontier, Darwin very smartly has Superman die about two-thirds of the way through right. and come back at the end. But, right. you know, I mean, if he was there, he would have solved the whole thing. Well, we did that every episode. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's what you did. <laughs> he would, the what gas you did. would get him, the kryptonite, something would knock him out, and he'd be like, oh, we can't, oh, okay, we got to do this without him. That's, that <laughs> the whole first season was that. It's like, get him out of the way. So that, you know, <laughs> so give him a Rubik's Cube. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep them busy, <laughs> sigh. <laughs> um, are there any episodes or projects that you worked on that you think are, in your opinion, underrated, that aren't the highlight? Because everyone talks about Heart of Ice or even Two-Face, but are there 
projects that you worked on like, oh, I loved this one and maybe it doesn't get as much fan recognition as maybe you would have hoped? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Really Starcom. Yeah, well, that was a cool show. And yeah. Anybody saw it. No. <laughs> the weird thing is, that's not true though. Yeah, I know. For I know, some I know. reason, I mean, I wasn't a director. I was a storyboard director. And we would get, Dan and I, I remember doing like a whole Trojan Crowbar. Yeah. We did an we entire did act overnight. Yeah. And he like, I mean, yeah. I'm stuck. But Dan just stayed there and we're like, we're drawn. Well, the, the, the way we would work it is Kevin is like a machine. He could board like page, page, page. And we're on Ghostbusters and I would clean, clean, clean. So I would board a little bit. I would. I, I did actually come up oh, with yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, you did a lot of work. But mostly, I was really fast at cleaning up his stuff. And I really had a really cool way of interpreting his work. So I, I really liked working on that. And it was always like, it was always a, oh, my gosh, then this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen. Oh, it was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a really fun process. Yeah. Then it's, um, but to be honest, it's like somewhere in the world, Starcom, that's the one thing. Like, I would get the Directors Guild. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, as a director in America, in animation, the union and uh, the industry doesn't really recognize us as directors, so we don't get royalties. Unless, yeah. well, Unless it's foreign yeah. distribution. Yeah. Right. And then the Directors Guild will actually send us checks. And they're not like necessarily big checks. But the one show that I constantly got checks from was Starcom. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's in yeah. every language. Yeah. It's yeah. all over the world. It's just, yeah. and it's like to this day, it's playing. And I to, and uh, I used to get a lot of Shaolin Showdown. Oh yeah, <laughs> Shaolin yeah. Showdown. Yeah, that that. Kid, yeah, well, yeah I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, but in Starcom, I remember one thing that we would do is like Dan and I, like because the bad guys had robot minions that were like these big hulking guys. <laughs> it's like, okay, they can go down hard. And the one thing the studios in uh, overseas would always do was like, yeah, it'd be limited animation and you'd be cringing at some of the animation. And we were really trying to use actual science, mm -hmm. you know, because Voyager had just started sending pictures back then. And so now we are getting a clear look at what Saturn actually looks like, what the rings of Saturn actually look like. So we were trying to apply all of that to the show. But the animation would come back and it's like, God, if only that painting was better, if only that. But when the robots died, the animation was full on. They, they yeah. brought out their yeah. best guys and the robots would like get a shot in the head and jerk back and <laughs> head would hit the wall. And then you get two more in the chest and drop. And we're like, yes. <laughs> Anymore. Anyway. It was like, uh, I... <laughs> Uh, I, I wanted to quickly touch upon different films or episodes where it was directly based off of comics. Now, Mike, I know you worked on Dark Knight Returns. Right. And you even said that it was kind of a farewell storyboard for Batman, So, in a way. So sure. what was your experience working with that, knowing that Dark Knight Returns is such a groundbreaking book for the character and kind of bringing yeah. that to the animation for the first right. time? Well, I, it was just I heard that it, I heard that they were doing it. I wasn't involved with it directly, but I know I know Jay Oliva. Uh, he'd worked for me on the Batman and other things, and um, uh, I just found him at the studio one day. I said, "I want to work on that." Um, you know, he's like, "Oh, of course, yeah, for sure." So you know, I just did storyboards on a, uh, just a couple short scenes in it. Uh, uh, the, the politician up on the building who who you know ends up falling or jumping and uh, Batman coming in, in disguise and all of that. It was a really fun thing to do. I also did the, the Reagan scene at the White House, which wow. was great. That was really fun. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was, a, it was uh, you know, that, that book had, had come out not too long before, uh, it was in the years previous to the animated series. So I think we were all somewhat influenced by it, sure. or at least inspired yeah. by that book, if not influenced by it, so. We got to do it right. first. Right, well, that's true, <laughs> actually. That's true. Yeah, we all did homages to the, to yeah. the and we did it in the Batman as well. Yeah. Uh, but this was the real thing, yeah, and I, I, I just know. think the team did a great job. <laughs> okay. I think the team did just a great job of, oh, okay. of being faithful to the book, and, and um, Jay's a really strong director, and, and uh, I thought the color design was great. Yeah. It was just great. It was gratifying to, to be involved in any way. 
and uh, and we did really that book, like all those DC the DC comics uh, movies. You know, we all really made an attempt to follow very closely the book mm -hmm. and try to bring the panels to life as much as possible. Yeah. Were there other comics that any of you were inspired by when you were working on episodes well, in particular God. that you could well, point out? Or? Well, quest, uh, yeah, no. I, learned I've how to said it before. Pronounce Rachel Ghoul. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we learned Rachel Ghoul. <laughs> no, that was um, like one of the dreams of my life. Like when I was, um, how old was I? 13, maybe, when The Demon's Quest came out mm -hmm. by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. And peop, some people have talked about the episode because it takes Batman out of Gotham. But for me, that like just, when I read that book, and it was like, I don't know how many issues, like five or six issues, starting with the introduction of Talia, and the introduction, of, you know, all the way through the re revelation of Rachel Ghoul, all the way to Batman stripped to the waist in the desert, having a saber duel with Rachel Ghoul in the middle of the desert. And I'm like, I don't know why, but it's like that was one of the few things that when I was a kid, I said, I want to do a cartoon of this really bad. Mm -hmm. I want to do a cartoon of this. And when Bruce hired me, I went to Bruce. I said, Bruce, just promise me that we had the rule that you, in the Batcave, the hood doesn't come off. Either he's Batman or he's no. Bruce Wayne. There ain't that guy. And I said, except when Rachel Gould steps into the Batcave. Then the colleague says, yes, that's when it is. I'm doing that episode, too, by the way. <laughs> if Rachel Gould shows up, promise me I'm going to do Rachel well, the Gould. The writers hated us for that. Yeah. They hated, hated. that. Yeah. Really? They did not understand the graphics. And we were like, no, 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 you don't understand. Batman is not, Bruce Wayne is not a guy. He is Batman. That, that, the, right. Bruce Wayne is the, is the disguise. Yes. We don't want to ever say, we never saw, I mean, as silly as the Adam West show, it worked really well. You know, Adam West, Bruce Wayne is one guy, Batman is another. We never see the, the mask coming off. And it, it, yeah. it's, it creates mystery, it creates something. You know, but they're always like, no, let's make him a real guy. It's like, no, that, that, we, he's mythic, he's iconic, he's not a real guy. He's special, yeah. he's somebody do, we aspire to be. <laughs> um, and so that's why we would always cut to a shadow on a wall and you'd see the mask coming off because we're just, we're not allowed to see that. Yeah. And uh, boy, the writers were like, ah. And they'd always write scenes where they, oh, Batman at the computer with his cowl off. Yeah. Like, no! And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and no, then yeah. Denny O'Neill was the outsider. Who wrote, you know, again, he, he did his own adaptation of uh, yeah. The Demon's Quest. Mm. You know, it's, it's his own ad, and he got to do that moment. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> <guys. laughs> we, we, we let him do it. That's yeah. great. They, I, mean, I remember that we got, we had so much time to do that. It was a two parter. Yeah. And it just seemed like we were working on it for months. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. A, yeah. yeah. Like a feature or something. Yeah. It was, was wonderful. Great. Yeah. I also grew up on that comic. So yeah. 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 We were all. So yeah. starting with Vertigo to Demon's Quest and then Demon's Quest Part Two. That was, the, yeah, we were like on one storyline yeah. yeah. for like uh, oh, yeah. two or three months. Yeah, that was wonderful. And it was great. Yeah, that was like, yeah, Mike did the Panther oh, yeah. sequence. <laughs> and it's like, and that's like, I, I cringe at some of the animation, but that sequence inside the temple where Batman's fighting the Panther, man, it's like the, the animation came back so nice. It just reminded me we got to do the Jonah Hex episode. Sorry oh, yeah. to jump ahead, yeah. but that awesome. reminded and me. And Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex awesome. Got to do Jonah Hex, which is actually oh, yeah. me. Uh, not that I was the first in line, but, well, actually, if you know me, it's like, yeah, <laughs> ironclad dirigibles, you know, Zeppelins. and wrote it. That was it, yeah. <laughs> wrote that episode, yeah. too. And Sorry. Jonah Hex. That was because after one of the recordings, uh, Bruce... Uh, Paul and I are sitting there on the steps just shooting, shooting the crap. And uh, Paul's like, well, what character would you want to do that, you know, and Bruce goes, I know, Kevin, you want to do Enemy Ace, don't you? I says, yeah, I'd like to do Enemy Ace. It's like, yeah, well, there's that story Neil Adams did, but I don't know, you know, and he's like, and he's, but what else, you know, what else, Kevin? He said, well, Jonah Hex. And then they went, wait a minute. <laughs> and then we hammered out the storyline right then and there. And Paul got Joe Lansdale, who was doing Jonah Hex at the time, oh, to yeah, write the script. Yeah. Oh, so good. And uh, oh, we had so Joe Denton, who oh, was... Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Joe was... Messy. Yeah. He, he's... Uh, I miss Joe. Yeah, he's a good guy. But Joe Denton would uh, come to my office uh, after he'd be gone for a weekend in uh, Arizona. And he'd go, this is me, you know? And he's like, and there he is. 
slouch hat, six shooters, <laughs> you know, he just totally yeah, he in costume, he Joe. Was, yeah. And um, he wasn't, uh, Joe was, what was Joe? He was the, he was a background guy? Uh, he was a cleanup artist. He was, in a, yeah, know, he was a cleanup artist. He would clean up, but he, but he did, he did all those models. I grabbed him and like, you know, wait, well he, that's not his job, to shut up. That's not his job yeah. description. No, this guy can draw a six shooter. Yeah. And I want a Colt Dragoon, man. Oh, it was all perfect. It was all perfect. Yeah. We, I still have those model sheets, all those, hand, oh. all, exactly every angle of how a gun works, how the hand, how it, oh, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> how to load it, everything was We cool. worked with Joe and like, and just, I got to do, I mean, and, and, I, and I apologize to Mike especially because I would pull rank on things that I really wanted to draw. So it's like, <laughs> I wanted to draw those guys firing cannons so bad. And Mike's like, I want to do the Gatlin gun. Well, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's all right. I got to do Jonah coming into town. And, yeah. yeah. So that was, yeah, that that was, was, that was totally awesome. <laughs> I wanted to do that too. <laughs> I did something. But there's only so much you can draw. So before I'm going to have the floor open and you guys can ask questions, I did kind of want to round it out because yesterday it was announced that Batman Beyond is getting a remastered Blu-ray release, Yay. which is crazy, <laughs> for the 20th anniversary. And Batman the Animated Series is now remastered on Blu-ray yeah. and also Mask of Phantasm and so many uh, Batman-centric shows and films. Since Batman's turning 80, I just wanted to know from each of you guys, why do you think he's just as popular as he is today, even more popular, and why he hasn't faded away into obscurity like other characters? And what is such the draw that you think the Batman character is for, for so many people? Well, great question. the thing is, is like, uh, here's Batman. And the thing is, through a horrible misfortune as a little kid, um, this guy who has all the wealth in the world does not grow up as a spoiled brat. He grows up, he cares about people. He wants to help everyone. And he sacrifices, the thing about Bruce Wayne is that he sacrifices everything to be Batman. He works, it's, he's dedicated his whole life. He's only as good as he is through educating himself, using his, he uses his money to help mankind. And he does it and he sacrifices his body mm -hmm. to be there. And he'll risk anything, he'll do anything. And it's like, God, don't you wish there was someone like that mm -hmm. that we could all count on <laughs> for real? Yeah. And, and he doesn't kill. And there are, yeah, <laughs> and he does not kill. The movies right. that we have now, where I'm like, Michael Keaton, it's like, and I love Tim Burton. And I think it's a beautiful movie. And I, and I, and I, and we owe a lot to it. Yeah, <laughs> and we all, we owe a lot to it. But it's like, Really, you, I just saw Batman use the bat plane to strafe. He just literally came down and strafed all the bad guys, the minions. It's like, he, what? It's like, and you know, Christopher Nolan is like, how many people were in those cars exploding? <laughs> that he's causing, by the way. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, it's a like, lot of expendable extras. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, no, yes. Of course, that's not realistic. You know, oh, well, Batman would kill. It's not realistic. No, no, uh, no, that's, no. That's the core. That's the whole idea. It's, it is. It, it is uh, a, it, it's, it's a mythic. It's an aspirational thing. It, right. it's, it's a person we're supposed to want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think we relate to him also as just Batman's probably the most human of, of, let's say, superhero characters. He's not a superhero. He's a human that... You know, right, so, and, and I think the duality also is a thing. I think we all yeah. sort of mm -hmm. feel like maybe we have a secret person that, in us that does good in some way, you know. Mm -hmm. We would like to anyway, and Batman is living that for us, you know, okay. in some way. So. so if anyone has any questions for them, uh, well, uh, you in the back. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, we're, I, we're not connected to that. It's, no. no, it's not they in our kicked, purview. They kicked us out rolling. <laughs> that that was on. a question for yesterday's panel, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't kick us out. No, no they didn't. <laughs> no, was like... Favorite thing about Harley? Favorite thing? Ooh. <laughs> There's a lot of but, favorites. By the way, <laughs> to, to solve one of the mysteries, 
Mike did the pigtails first. Oh, the reason that's that, right. That's yeah. right. Because Mike the goes to the right. office, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, we don't have a model for her in her jail cell. And it's like, what, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know. And it's like, well, she doesn't look like, look at this model. It doesn't look like Harley. And I'm like, well, Mike, you know, you draw it. And it's like, you know, she's got those things. So <laughs> pigtails, and suddenly it still looks like Harley. Yeah, yeah. Amazing how much of that stuff happens in storyboards. Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, but yeah, we love Harley. Oh yeah. my God, Harley! Yeah, no. I mean, Harley. Remember, it was just it came out of the series. It did not exist before. So. And I gotta, I gotta apologize to Dan. <laughs> and See if I accept it. Yeah, because <laughs> Paul Dini comes into my office, uh. and he goes, and he just says to me on the aside, he goes and says, you know, I think the Joker needs a girlfriend. Remember how Cesar Romero always had a mall? I think, I think you know, oh, okay. You know, I said, that's a great idea, Paul. And he leaves, you know, and then Harley. The script comes out. Hey, I don't know Boyd or whoever. I think Boyd got this. I said, what about me? <laughs> and then it came in, and then, um, and then Paul comes in, and he says, Joker has an A-bomb. <laughs> And then, you know, it leads to this climax where, uh, you know, the Joker has the A-bomb in a, in a helicopter and he's going to, you know, and I said, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's a Martin bomber from like 1920s and he does the whole, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So Paul leaves. I hear in the office next door, Dan's next in rotation. <laughs> and I hear like... Paul starting to, Bruce starting to, here, we got this new Harley script. And I just got out of my chair and I walked in and I went, sorry, Dan. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I get the Harley. It's all right, it's all right. I got, I got to do Harley. I got to do yeah, Harley on the holiday Where's night. So I was, I was uh, yeah. Yeah. So I just, it's fine. It's I just, fine. I, I'm, I'm a forgiving. Yeah. You got to do Harlequinade. Yeah, yes. and Harlequinade, uh, yeah, that, and Harley's Holiday, Harley's Holiday too. Harley's Holiday. Yeah, yeah both. Uh, yeah. Both of those, and it's like Harley's Holiday again, that was like Paul came in and pitched, you know, just the concept. And I will say this, that I did go, and he says, yeah, and he's out with Veronica Vreeland, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Harley kidnaps her. It's like this madcap adventure across town, like a screwball, like Preston Sturge's comedy. And I said, and Veronica Vreeland's dad is Patton. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> we got to do that. That was, it was really fun. Yeah. That was really, that fun. Was really fun, fun to was draw. Really fun to work on. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's like Harley is like, well, to this day, it's like there's not one character that I enjoy drawing more than Harley. Mm -hmm. It's like, she, it's just such a wonderful design. And she, uh, yet I love her personality. Mm hmm. And the thing about Harley's Holiday that I really loved about Harley's Holiday was like, you know, I'm sane, you know, see? Oh, I'm over the crime thing. <laughs> like, and I, I actually signed the prop. I didn't even realize it. Paul Dini has it hanging in his, he has the cell hanging in his house. Oh, oh cool. And it's like it's got my signature on uh, Harley's release papers. Here we have time for one more question. Uh, That's a giant <laughs> <laughs> something. Absolute favorite. It's like I can't really. Yeah, it's hard to say. You can't really say because it's like, because <laughs> it's like you're while you're doing it, you're emotionally involved. Exactly. Right. It, it's like when you're in a room with Mark Hamill when he's doing the Joker. It's like then yeah. then he that absolutely the makes it yeah. your favorite character. <laughs> um, but yeah. but but the Mr. Freeze is amazing. And, yeah. And and that's a really tragic and interesting character. So. And then there's Harley. No, it's Catwoman. Yeah. No, I really loved Adrian Barbeau's <laughs> Catwoman. Oh, yeah, no, was awesome. no, the Catwoman was like really great. It's the only character design I got to do too. Was Isis. To her cat, because oh, Bruce says, "You draw it. I don't like drawing cats." You know, he, <laughs> he didn't like drawing. He didn't like drawing animals. You know, at that time. He's, I and, and, those up. That's right. <laughs> and Dan did the cleanup. That's right. No, and uh, God, I don't know. That, that see, that's an, it's impossible. 
Yeah. It's impossible because well, if Joker if, was great, though. and it's a, as yeah, advice. Yeah, great, yeah the Joker is great. The, uh, as advice I mean, to anyone who wants to get into animation, and if you're an artist, or especially if you're a storyboard artist, is like you know the fact is, the reason why we're still alive and still doing <laughs> storyboards and we're still doing cartoons. Um, a lot of people retire and stuff, but. I don't think any of us are going to get to. <laughs> we'll probably die in Likely harness. Not. But the thing is, is like it ain't that bad because uh, every time you're doing a storyboard, you're it, you're there. You're in the character's head. You love them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they Even come to life. Villains. They come. They're alive to us. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully to and, the and, viewer. And clearly, the Definitely. villains connected with people in on our show, which is a different thing from most. Yep. And I had heard. Uh, Alan Burnett had found out that, that for some reason, when the show was on the air, it was the number one show in prisons. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, but speaking of which, like, I went up to uh, Ventura County to go to a, uh, a bar club. I think I was going, I think it was They Might Be Giants was there. But it's like, I walk in and... Um, all I'll say is it's a rough crowd. And I had my leather jacket, the, the bat, my Batman crew jacket on, because it was kind of cold out, and I was like wearing that in. And I go walking in on my shoulder, and I turn around, and here's like this shave-headed guy, tattoos on his face, you know? And he's like, he's, like, he's a bouncer, you know? He says, where'd you get that jacket? <laughs> and I go, I worked on the show. This is uh, this is my crew jacket. And he went, put her there, buddy. God, <laughs> buy you a beer. And he goes like, and then the band's starting up, and he goes like, hey, guy comes over, and says, and they take me right up to the front of the stage, right there, and I got a beer in my hand, and I got a shot of whiskey in the other. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, and the guy came over, puts his arm around me, and he goes, we watch that show every day at the bar. Oh, wow. It's like, it's like all of us. It's like, man, keep it up. <laughs> well, between that story and, and the prison fact that I just learned, that's a perfect way to round out this panel. <laughs> so I want to thank Kevin Altieri and Dan Riva and Michael for coming and talking about the work. Thank you guys so much. And thank you guys for coming to the panel.